Good morning and welcome to the business briefing for the month of February. I'm your host Mark Anthony and if you were here uh, half an hour ago you'll know this is my second live show of the day but thankfully having screwed up most of my script last time around I'm going to be joined on this one by uh, none other than Neil Edwards the CEO at the Builders Conference. Uh, Neil is probably feeling fairly chipper because his beloved uh, Crystal Palace didn't lose this weekend. He's probably feeling even more chipper based on the fact that the BC Live League table has just registered eight billion pounds worth of new work. To find out exactly how that happened in a short month with the New Year's hangover still hanging over us Let's get Neil onto the show. Good morning. Good morning, Neil. Um, I've already preempted this, but <laughs> before we ask any questions at all, what were the scores on the doors mm -hmm. for the month of February 2021? Remarkably, we hit another <clears throat> eight a billion pounds worth of work of new construction orders that we researched uh, here at Builders Conference during the month. Now, a short month as well, so absolutely remarkable. <clears throat> I guess the question then is, what the hell is going on? We'd like to know, really. Um, we're trying to uh, understand what's happening in the market because there is a lot of uh, negativity around, especially certain sectors at this present moment in time. But this month, you know, just seems to have broken every kind of rule, shall we say. You know, last month was, what was it, 6.3 billion, which was pretty good um, when we normally think between four and five. But this month is 8 billion. Um, huge, huge numbers. There is an underlying concern, if we would like to say, is the fact that who's going to do all this work? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's great to have it all in the pot, but who in the way of labor from the from the bottom of side of things is going to do this work so are we going to see inflation um going through or is or are the sectors that are seeing uh, redundancies at this present moment in time are they going to have to be retrained quickly uh, to have a new profession and come into construction um these are all the questions we're posing but there are no answers at the moment but these are the questions we're posing now, I know in previous months when we've hit particularly um, high totals, you know, particularly in the last couple of years, we've had sort of HSE to, to point out and say, well, you know, there's there's six billion pounds worth of, of work in, in one big hit. Have we had that this month or is this just, just an accumulative total? It's just an accumulative total. It's, sh it's shown by the fact that the uh, top 20 on our BC Live list uh, of contractors have all uh, secured over the hundred million pounds worth of work and there are a couple of uh, signature projects in there uh, up at the top but the leading project manager stroke company that's at the top hasn't even hit the one billion pound mark it's just under the billion pound mark so it's it's spread very evenly um, and if you look over the whole of the month there are something like 340 companies securing work which is very good news as well um, and they've all got significant wins so yeah it's spread evenly um or more evenly than it has been there are no signature projects of hs2 or whatever and we've still got some of those to come because obviously there's 2a to be added on to hopefully this and we're also looking at um probably hopefully uh the a303 underpass of stonehenge and maybe um there is also another tunnel at east of london um so is boris coming up with the actual or the government rather than boris because it's the government uh is is the government coming up with the goods um i hope so but let's keep going back to the fact who's going to do it we'll, we'll come on to the specifics of the uh, individual winners and um I was going to say winners and losers. I don't think there were too many losers. So no, not really. the individual winners in a second. But that spread is probably the most reassuring part of the monthly total. The fact that it, it's not just one or two contractors that have taken the spoils. We're talking 340 that have all had a very good month. Yes, exactly. And that 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 is the absolute positive news. And hopefully that is um, being disseminated through those businesses as well, because there is a lot of uncertainty for staff as we go forward now. Uh, what is the future for their business? Because they're seeing a lot of uh, issues around around the UK economy. But hopefully those companies have um, shouted uh, loudly to their staff all the way through and said, yes, we've secured this. Um, and 
keeping fingers crossed, we are planning ahead and and, and the planning looks pretty good. So, yeah, it's uh, 340 companies is great, great news. So you mentioned that the uh, top company didn't quite make the billion pound. Who were they? Um, how, how big did they get? Yeah, well, but, well, the top company is actually a project manager stroke client kind of thing. And they picked up two projects. Um, one was worth uh, 730 million. Um, and it, it's the client in conjunction with A2 Dominion Group, which is obviously a housing uh, partnership. Uh, and the development would provide over 1,200 residential dwellings, real retail business and community community spaces. Uh, and that's in Southeast 15, round Lewisham area. It's called the Ruby Triangle site. Um, they're doing it with the, quite a prestigious architect here as well, uh, Farrells, uh, and in conjunction with also KSR Architects. So that's uh, one of their projects. And the other project they've picked up is in conjunct the client in conjunction with ICG Urban Village Development. Um, and it's a four buildings of between four and nine stories to provide over 375 residential units uh, and flexible retail units underneath that as well. So they're like a, kind of a mixed use development. Um, and that one, the architects are going to be a sale architecture. Now, Avanton um, Limited, who are named as the lead on both of these, um, we're trying to find out whether they're going to do this via project management or packages or or whatever. But yeah, they're the two businesses or they're the two projects that have um, shot a vent on up to the top um, of the BC Live League table. Oh, it's notable that that big project, the, the 730 million or whatever it was, not only is it housing, which is our usual suspect, it's in London, <laughs> which is geographically our usual suspect. Yeah, yeah. The, that, I, I take it that's going to skew the uh, the overall figures on both of those as well, is it? It has, it has. And um, w one good thing about it is is the fact that it's not so much of a speculative housing. Um, it is divided into two, um, where you have got some social and um, local housing rather than just... But yes, it has very much skewed that. We're looking at something like um, £3.5 billion this month which is just under half, obviously, of, of the overall month's total of housing projects. And then 1.5 of mixed-use developments. So if you add those two together, you know, you are 5 million, or billion, sorry, 5 billion pounds worth of work. Um, yeah, it's still in those two sectors that really we are looking at. Um, the other ones that which are catching up, which is uh, this month, is warehouses. So we're looking at, uh, the investment as we've now coming out of uh, uh, parts of the economy, but the logistics side of moving uh, goods around the UK uh, and the demise of obviously the high street means that warehouses are going to become more prominent in our in our world. So, yeah, um, warehouses and industrial units is this the sec uh, no, sorry the third largest sector this month. Um, and following on from that, there there are some uh, larger projects in roads, so that that's where the investment is coming there. Uh, offices are fifth, something like four hundred million, and lastly, in sixth is is education sector. So, but yeah, it's still housing. So, who came in at number two? Right, number two this month um, is Lang O'Rourke. Um, that so it's a very old and well-established name there they've picked up a 385 million pound project in Bayswater once again London uh, and it's phase two design and build of the Whiteley's development site um, so it's designed by Foster and Partners uh, the new Whiteley's will deliver something like 139 world-class um, modern residences uh, and also some shops offices restaurants public courtyard and a cinema um, and that's yeah worth three hundred and eighty five million pounds. And aren't Lango Rocks thought to be in the uh, in the prime position for the new uh, Everton Football Club Stadium as well? Yes, they are. Um, they've signed a pre contract order as we speak. Um, we actually were told that they had actually got it, um, but 
there was some confusion over some of the final planning issues. But I believe in the last 10 days, those have now been ticked. And all we're now doing is going to the final rubber stamp of the actual contract. And probably by the end of the, the, the football season, um, you will see that the fact that it, it, the fanfare will be given, um, as well as hopefully, uh, obviously, if, uh, for all Everton fans, they finish uh, significantly up the league table as well. So I think they're trying to do good news, good news, good news. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it met the final hurdle of planning. And uh, yeah, Lango Rook are in absolute prime position to actually take that project as well. I think that highlights the way that the BC Live League table works as well, doesn't it? The fact that you know it, it's it's made the uh, the headlines. I mean, I, I'm aware of it. I think Construction Index and possibly Construction Inquirer have covered it. But you're still sitting on your hands and making sure that all the eyes are, are dotted and the T's are crossed because that's that's how you end up with a factual league table, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, we. I, I was trying to jump the gum. It was something like four or five years ago on a project for Google in the middle of te- in the middle of London, and uh, I understood that you know the, the, uh, many of the papers and press were highlighting the fact that it had been secured and won. Um, so I was questioning what were we doing incorrectly at that stage, and I was told that very very succinctly by one of my members of staff. Um, uh, we're researchers. We've been told that, yes, they're going to get it, but there's a number of things coming that could be a problem. Um, those number of things that could be a problem turned out to be a big problem because they didn't get it. And four years later, five years later, it was a totally different company that actually started the work on the Google building. So, yeah, that's the difference with our league. Tape. We don't put we only put things up there as long as they are uh, confirmed. Yeah, which again, that, that's you know, you can see bclive.co.uk rolling, uh, scrolling across the bottom of the screen. There, that's why we choose to to bank on your information because by the time it makes that league table, it's kosher. It's it's been validated. It's been thoroughly researched, and 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 we know that it's it's safe to publish. Yeah, exactly. Nobody wants to be starting um, their uh, kind of marketing push towards if you're a, if you're a business that's going to supply goods to those particular uh, companies uh, a marketing push to them when it's not actually going to happen because you could be spending four five six thousand pounds or whatever um trying to put uh, together a, a a fancy marketing package to those to that company and that could all be wasted so yeah you've got to be careful i do understand you want to be first uh, and you want to get there first but sometimes you just have to um we kind of one of our mantras at Builders Conference is less is more um, because if you put too much out there or sorry, you know, incorrect information, you could send the hairs running very, very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. So number three. Number three on the list is uh, another project manager type uh, pro- uh, company as well. But this is for a £200 million project at 70 Grace Church Street in the centre of London. Um, it includes for more than 72,000 square metres of flexible office floor space uh, and more than 1,800 uh, square metres of flexible retail space. So uh, th- there's still confidence in the city to provide these uh, buildings, um, even with the economic outlook that has been uh, severely dented by uh, COVID. But <clears throat> yes, it's something like a 33-storey uh, mixed-use scheme, a public gallery, winter garden at levels 29 and 30 uh, will offer views across London. So, yeah, that's a project. We, we don't know whether the, the client is going to act as a project manager as well on this one as well. So we're, we're looking at that as well. It's interesting. I, I, you know, I, I tend to look for, at these um, discussions of ours for trends. And I mean, certainly in, over the past few years, we've seen a lot of move towards mixed use development. So part residential, part retail. As you say, there's been the rise and rise of warehousing. Uh, I, I think you're right in the fact that, you know, the, the, the decline of the high street, but also the fact that UK manufacturing is not perhaps what it once was. So we're, we're bringing goods in from overseas. So that's prompted that. But a couple, we've had a couple of examples there, number one and number three, where we're talking about project management companies. Is is that the fact that you're getting the information earlier or is that the fact that project management is becoming the way forward for these things? Well, I, if you go around, um, obviously I go around London w- when I could <laughs> before obviously lockdown and you look at signboards and everything else, you'll look at 
some of them and 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 on on top of cranes and you can't quite see who the developer is or sorry i say the contractor is i think that's probably yeah if you've got a strong team of, of people within your business that can manage 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 the product then are we seeing some of these projects going not to main contractors i don't know it, it's it's definitely something to keep a look out of and and that's why mace does very well um because it's obviously uh, multi-functional uh, multi-disciplined as a business um, it can pm jobs uh, and it can also work as a contractor so is that a, a, an underlying trend we don't know uh, well covid has done everything to the economy um i .e. it has made us all sink differently and maybe that's what's happening with some clients yeah I, I, when you think about the way that the construction industry works anyway you're talking about sort of multi-layers and contractors and subcontractors and specialist subcontractors working for the subcontractors I, I wouldn't say we don't need main contractors anymore but but when you think about what a project management company could do it's it's not like they're overstepping the, the bounds of, of what they're capable of it, it seems like a perfectly reasonable approach doesn't it it does yeah and as long as you've got a strong team working and and the coordination is all there what probably a lot of clients don't want to do is the coordination between all the trades between all the disciplines between all the professionals uh, but if you've got a project management team that are probably coming from the likes of the big 10 contractors across the uk plus others then you are saving quite a lot of money most probably um and okay it it can have its gains and its losses but yeah it, it could be a way forward in the, in the future right so getting back to the main part of the conversation i keep yeah the tangents i do apologize I, That's okay. I, I, my first show this morning i hadn't had enough coffee i think i've had too much now so uh, get, <laughs> getting back to, to number four on the t on the league table yeah number four is morgan sindel group uh they've also taken the uh, most number of project wins this month they've gone to 26 um, with an overall total, uh, an accumulative total there of £311 million. Um, the largest one of their projects is for their uh, uh, level homes side of things. Um, and that's for a, uh, a development in Weymouth. So finally, we've, we've wandered out of London and uh, we've gone a little bit further south, south, southwest. Um, it's, it's a mixed use development comprising of up to 100, uh, was it 500 dwellings, including affordable housing, um, and also up to eight hectares of employment land to include a new hotel, residential care home, car showrooms and other employment land. So a very, very broad project that one is. And that's worth about 120 million. And as I said, that's down uh, in Weymouth um, in fifth. Oh, sorry. You're gonna... I was going to say, when, when you look back at the, the, the BC Live League table over the last couple of years, housing has been, you know, on occasions more than half, sometimes three quarters of all the, the workload. And yet we're, st we're still missing house building targets. It, it, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't stack up at all, does it? No, it doesn't. So that shows you how much we are lagging behind and how the, you know, I think I, I understand it's something like it's got up to, isn't it, 250,000 uh, residential units per year for the next five years if we're going to meet the UK um, population. Uh, you know, it'd be good to see um, how many units will be do we did in 2020. Um, we haven't got that information yet. Um, it's it's we can collect it. We we do collect it. We do collect it on our projects to say how many units. But it's the industry. I have to say is very poor at actually giving the real figures out because uh that probably is a bit too uh open and honest um accountable um all those kind of words so yeah we we would like to collect that information it's easy of <clears throat> excuse me it's very easy to do so on our platform but the industry itself is not too forthcoming with it um, the, the interesting point there, I think, is you've already said, you know, with, with £8 billion pounds worth of work, how are we going to do it? If by some miracle we did start to hit that 250,000 residential mm. units per year, mm. that, that begs the question again, doesn't it? You know, how, how on earth would we do it? Well, 
you and I have spoken over countless number of years about apprenticeships um, and how construction has never been seen as a real sexy industry, whether it be uh, on site or in the office. Um, we've really got to have a huge change in our uh, way of thinking at school. And we're not talking about 14, 15 year olds uh, thinking about construction. We've really got to start earlier than that because, um, you know, we really have to go from 11, 10, 11, 12 years old to get people interested in construction. Uh, you and I have both had a um, a great time in construction, we can say. Um, we really have. It's, it's not always been good, but it's been pretty good to us. Um, but yeah, we've got to we've got to somehow make the, the bricklayers and carpenters or and electricians or we look at prefabrication and we look at offsite uh, works uh, and that would include huge investment in machinery, technology. So it's a balance. Who's going to give us the money uh, to invest in that amount of work? I think it's often said that our prefab works business is is okay but there are a number of other countries around the world that provide better um better products than us at the present moment in time whether that be scandinavia or whether that be even china uh but we don't look at there obviously the carbon footprint we should really be looking at trying to bring that um a lot of that prefabrication back to the uk yeah, I, it's interesting. We, we we did a focus on um, apprenticeships and training in our recent uh, construction collective show, um, and it, it was very refreshing to see the likes of um, you know the plant hire, so Flannery and Lynch Plant and Plant Force, not just investing in apprentice apprentices, but investing in apprenticeship centres and training centres, largely around HS two, but they're using HS two as as a means to strengthen their workforce to a really really big degree. I, I maybe I'm too remote from it, but I don't I don't sense that from the the contractor side of things. I would have to say, and it, I haven't heard that we're providing that kind of um, understanding. Um, what our data will show um, is where we should be putting these training centres, uh, because it's pointless putting on courses um, such as. Uh, I don't want to photography. I, I, I'm being a bit controversial here, but, um, you know, phot photography and things like that, when we are really trying to build a better industry and construct, uh, build a better UK, and we'll need, as I say, electricians, um, plumbers, all of all trades all trades you know it, it's it we really got to put on those courses rather than yeah as i say here's the controversial part fluffy courses shall we say hey listen i work in a fluffy industry so i i you know <laughs> I, I, I i us boys in the media we wouldn't know a day's work with <laughs> jumped up and gave us a haircut mm. but what, what is interesting is you know when, when you're looking particularly i think when you're a parent and you're looking at potential careers for your children you're you're trying to look generally for long-term stability and you know you've mentioned plumbers electricians and that kind of thing that the housing sector over the past four or five years would have given those apprentices those trainees and those people joining the workforce enormous stability in, you know and you know a great deal of job satisfaction and some bloody good earnings as well i think that's what we got to get over to people um or at least young people um is the fact that there is a good career and a good earnings obviously i started my uh, life uh, uh, very early on at, uh, at weights absolutely fantastic training there and i i went on to the uh, pre-construction estimating side of things and now um it, that salary that you can attain in that particular um career is very good you know, it's way above the national average, way above the national average. And in point of fact, uh, some, OK, in, in these times, it might be a bit different. But in, in, in some times, it's like finding hen's teeth to uh, get a good estimator. So, um, yeah, we, we have to say that quantity surveyors, construct, you know, construction managers, project managers, uh, going to project managers. We've already spoken about the fact that some of these clients are taken on board that as well. So, 
you know, when you're running a 730 million pound project, that's one hell of a company, you know, um, even if you're running a five million pound project, uh, that is a five million pound business. So you're you, you really have a number of um, yeah, you know, you're, you're, you, the responsibilities that you've got to take on board for those is huge. And and we don't highlight how good the construction industry really is. Sometimes we're very poor at it. You've mentioned Morgan Sindel. Um, the, the next question, I guess, is where did Kia come? Because Kia and Morgan yeah. Sindel do tend to fight head to head on the biggest number of contracts. Yes, um, they got 21. Uh, so <laughs> so roughly one per, per working day of the month. Exactly right. You know, that that's that's the ballpark figure that they we, we kind of uh, look for here. Not they look for, we look for. Um, yeah, they've they've hit 21 projects and over 100 million pounds worth of work there as well in the month. So, you know, on a, on a normal month, you know, they'll be in the top five, ten, um, but not this month. You know, Morgan Sindel obviously have got uh, 26 projects. Um, fantastic. Graham Construction have got 10 projects this month. Um, and also, where are we looking at? Volker Vessels, they've got eight projects. So, you know, they, a, a number of companies have got a number of projects. But, yeah, Morgan Sindel have got these uh, uh, 26 projects, which means that they're obviously number four. Number five, if we go to that very quickly, is Volker Vessels. As I said to you, uh, they've picked up uh, uh, eight projects this month the largest of which is uh 185 million pound it's called the uplands development infrastructure scheme and and that's down in southampton botley area um so that's a number of road road areas and road projects down there and that's for hampshire county council and one last one i'd like to talk about is obviously uh sixth on the list is bam uh, they've got over a quarter of a billion, 254 million pounds worth of work this month. Uh, and they've picked up a 192 million pound project. One of them is for the new filming studio at Sky TV. Uh, 12 film studios, production office, set construction, workshop, screening cinema, and associated an, uh, access parking. And that's at Boreham Wood. North, so it's north of London. Uh, so that's a, a, a very prestigious job. We've already mentioned the fact that um, housing has is, is given us the lion's share. We also mentioned the fact that, that London has fared very well. One of the, the, the areas that we've looked at quite a bit, well, two areas that we've looked at recently is Scotland because Scotland had different lockdown re um, restrictions than, than the rest of the country and, and therefore they came out things slightly more slowly. But mm. also we're, we're keeping a very keen eye on on what's happening in the Midlands as well. So yeah. how did those two do this this past month? Yeah, well, they did pretty good as well. Um Scotland is uh, 458 million pounds worth of work. Um, but the two, so we say Midlands area is over 750 million pounds worth of work. Um, so, yeah, they are definitely emerging areas. Uh, and also uh, what we got down here, Northwest. Um, so that's like the Manchester's and the Liverpool areas. Uh, that's 365 million. Um, because, and because of that large project for Sky TV's new studio at Boreham Wood, uh, Hertfordshire is uh, 329 million pounds worth of work, but London, yes, 3.3 billion pounds worth of work. So still very London centric, really. We, we've also touched on in the past the the, um, the imbalance between public and private um, work. How are we looking on that? Still, still imbalanced, I would yeah, guess. Yeah, very, very imbalanced. Um, so it, it's. Is the government doing what it said it's going to do? I said, I said, a lot of the works may be coming out shortly. Yeah, the the, the split between the two um, is well, it's sixty three percent this month in the private sector, uh, and that's by project count, but in by project value. So uh, obviously, how much money is being spent? It's eighty percent in the public sector. Sorry, in the private sector. And only 20% in the private uh, public sector. Yeah, sorry, I'll go over them again. 20% in the uh, public and 80% in the private. So it'll all be on Wednesday's budget. That we'll see what's actually happening. Um, I think some of the money that's currently being uh, distributed around across the UK um, is probably going into more into people's pockets and rather than actually uh, infrastructure uh, projects going forward but it's when it turns off from 
obviously people's pockets into of uh, into the public sector. That's when we like to know. And, and we still haven't really seen these uh, headline 40 uh, health projects, hospital projects come through. But as I said before, are, I would think many of those are being redesigned because what they were designed for three or four years ago is totally something different to post pandemic UK uh, because probably we haven't well we wouldn't have even thought about it on the design stage there we're now looking at something that's totally different so there may be a delay in those projects because it would be absolutely futile because uh, our press would be uh, absolutely vicious if we start to build something that is inappropriate for a pandemic in the future that does that 80 20 split though on on value that does feel like a, a government tightening the purse strings doesn't it i think it is yeah i think it is it's um and maybe that's no great surprise given you know with the furlough scheme that will have cost a lot of money you know having to spend extra money on the the um the nhs to to get us through the pandemic that will have cost money that's got to come from somewhere but but 80 20 is a it's a big imbalance isn't it yeah so uh, but is the government lending the money to the private sector um so it doesn't actually if the private sector fails it's an issue there rather than an issue with a failing project on site because from from a from a local authority or a, or a government spend because we're already chasing the end total for crossrail aren't we you know how much that's gone over budget um and uh, i'm sure that will be the same type of press we'll be seeing in four or five years time when hs2 comes to a conclusion um so is it trying to deflect some of the issues by putting it out to the the private sector i'm an old cynic aren't i really um they're all looking we're all looking for um the, their next vote in four years time or three years time whatever it's going to be for the next government isn't it that that is the one thing i would say you know it is entirely predictable but you know having having endured all that's gone on with the pandemic and and brexit and everything else you'd have to think that the government will have to do something to appease the nation and and generally appeasing the nation means spending more on schools hospitals roads rail and and that kind of thing um which you know is ultimately good for the nation but it, and ultimately good for their voting possibilities but it's even better for the construction industry isn't it oh great for us you know i'm very selfish in that kind of way <laughs> <laughs> bring it on because um yeah i'm very selfish i want to keep us to be at the forefront of their thought processes what we have seen over the last i think it's a last month or so is there's been a tinkering behind the scenes regarding potholes now potholes is a big big money winner and or big big vote winner for a lot of governments and local authorities and it seems that their initial pledge in their manifesto about sorting out the roads may have been watered down in the last month or so and some of that money has been diverted um so uh i think there's a little bit more to come on that um but i know that potholes especially now as we're coming out of those winter months and it's been pretty harsh in some places and wet which obviously those two together make fantastic reading for the potholes you know they love it um <laughs> but uh, yeah i i hope that they don't decide to um rob peter to pay paul it's isn't that an interesting insight into the British national <laughs> you know, Yes, we are. We're worried about the, our children's education. We're worried about our health service. But that pothole at the end of my road really drives me to distraction. And that's exactly how I'm going to vote. The, <laughs> whichever party is most likely to fix my pothole. Yeah. And it, it's a known fact, isn't it? You, It's a known fact that if there's a lot of potholes on the way to work, um, you you know every one of them, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely right. Um, I, I guess the final question, then, Neil, is I, I, you know, obviously plenty to celebrate. I'm, I'm still not entirely sure any of us know quite why we're celebrating because I, I don't think there's any one thing that's pointing to why we've we've ended up with eight billion pounds. But scanning the horizon, we always keep an eye on on tenders. How are we looking in the tender department? 
it's it's leveled out it's leveled out we since the beginning of first uh, of january um we've put on uh over 1850 new construction projects now some of those are they're, they're banded into three sections uh tenders um post tender i that they've been put in uh but there's no news on those facts and obviously contract award and um that is above average uh, at this present moment in time um that really is above average so um uh, they've leveled because what we were seeing was a decline we're now seeing a little bit more uh certainty i think because obviously now we have this road map if we'd like to call it uh with these four stages of coming out of lockdown and obviously with the comment that we we don't want to go back and we won't want to go back um so yeah there's a little bit more certainty um so yeah uh, we're looking at numbers of tenders that that, that that haven't dropped further from shall we say round about december january time so there is still every possibility that we construction will lead us out of the doldrums and we will in fact build back better I think we will. I, but my biggest fear, and that this is on a personal note, is who is going to do it? Because what we don't want is shoddy work coming out from this. You know, we've we've been here before when uh, housing estates um, like Kidbrook and places like that in South East London were built uh, because we needed them built after wars and things like that. But because of the workmanship and because of the training and everything else was so poor, they have to then be demolished X amount of years later. We can't afford to do that. You know, we have to start to start to train these people and put apprenticeships at the top of everybody's uh, kind of list. And and rather than being a here's the controversial part again, uh, a social media influencer, um, which, yes, we, we've got to be saying to people, no, become a carpenter, become a become a plumber, become a become an electrician, become a roof tiler. Um, but on the reverse it does take time um to train these people up so we've got to start now rather than having the problem later on it's interesting you should mention kidbrook and and the, you know the problems of of poor construction in the past um last year uh, last week rather i, I did a, a a seminar with um, mike keo at cnd consultancy and we were talking about car parks british multi-story car parks and and he he made reference in there of the construction what his father told him was Friday afternoon construction. You know, it's Friday afternoon, that'll do. You know, we haven't got the mm. right size rebar, but that'll mm. do. We haven't got the right concrete, no, that'll do. Let's just get it done and get out. And, and as a result, we've got a, a huge potential crisis with crumbling car parks. And the as you say, housing stock has been exactly the same. You, you know, you've mm. only got to look at some of the, the tower blocks. And listen, I grew up in a couple of them. You, you've only got to look at the, the, the parlor state of some of those to see what we're talking about. You know, we, we do need to learn those lessons from the past, don't we? Yeah, I think we do. And, and I think I, I joined in a debate with you not so long ago regarding um, putting uh, cameras on sites or putting cameras on people um etc um we have them on parking attendance we have them on police we have them on ambulance we have them on people like that that's to protect not only them but obviously protect the public um but what's the difference in having a camera on on a on a site operative or an operative uh, uh, you know or a management operative uh to make sure that things are done correctly i think that's where the digital age is going to frighten a lot of people but i think in time it's only going to become part of what we do because to make sure we don't have that friday afternoon or uh, it will do attitude we need to make sure that people are doing things correctly and um, because lives could be lost at the end of the day um if something collapses like a, a car park or whatever then wow you know uh, what what could happen we don't know do we uh, but i think that's going to be part of when the digital age has got to come to construction that's all i'm uh, you know it's coming to everywhere else it's got to come to construction it's, it's such an interesting thing because I, I, obviously i spend part of my time writing about construction equipment and when you look at things like um compaction you know we can we can monitor exactly how many times a roller went over a certain spot so that if there is a failure on a road we can trace back trace back to the machine that did the compaction how, you know how it was made there's been a huge amount of work that's been done on on particularly projects like hs2 so you know they can monitor exactly 
what was done in certain places, where the film material came from, how many passes were, it was compacted in. All of that exists. And yet we, we, we still seem slightly reluctant to do that with people. And ultimately, you know, mm. people are, are the driving force of this industry, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, I think it's back down to the word accountability, really, Mark. It's, um, uh, we don't like that word in construction um, sometimes it, because, you know, w we can actually be brought to book. And, you know, I think you, you did something the other day regarding on one of your uh, breakfast shows at, at early in the morning about somebody falling through the roof. Um, now, it, it was from a roofing contractor and they also then decided to put themselves into liquidation uh, because it would be cheaper and more effective to do it. And the HSE finally uh, grew some and um, brought them out of it. They, they produced a law to, to bring them out of it and they were charged with it and everything else. But that's what we've got to do. You know, it's... Uh, but, but what will happen in the end of the day, clients ultimately will also have to pay for that. So it, it's down the whole chain that we've got to look at this down the whole chain bizarrely when, when you <clears throat> obviously it's a different industry but when you think about something like the waste industry for, as an example if you've run a landfill site you are effectively responsible for that landfill site for all eternity you know if, if there is a problem with with gas escaping or you know hazardous noxious chemicals leaking from it even if you've long since packed up and, and gone away or sold the site you are still in the firing line for that construction kind of needs to be the same doesn't it and, and as you say with with digital age and bim and all that goes with it all of that is perfectly doable all, it, all that's lacking i guess is is the will and and you know somebody we, to say yeah we, we're, we're willing to accept that level of transparency yeah and, and i don't think it should be we should be frightened of it we should actually embrace it i don't know how much a gopro costs nowadays or whatever and i'm just picking one but i'm sure there's a great deal number that you can put on the top of a helmet and and i even know that some of the larger uh housing companies in london because they're worldwide they're selling their units worldwide sometimes their uh, project managers or their sales people have these cameras fitted so they can walk around a unit and so the person doesn't who's maybe living in i don't know check it well <laughs> Slovakia, whatever, all of those places around the world don't have to get a hop on a plane. They can see the unit there. So we, we're partly doing it, but we don't want to do it in all of it. Um, it's great. You know, th this pandemic has made us all think something different. And uh, I think it will be a – but I think it will be a brave step by one company to do it. But I think they'll be in the day put on that pedal stool. I really do. It's it's one of those things again, though. I think the company that makes the leap is is the one that gets the, uh, you know, the, the the first mover advantage, isn't it? You know, we, I was talking recently to somebody at JCB about the fact that they can now log, you know, when a machine is turned on, when it's turned off, and you think about that within the plant hire industry. So rather than hiring a machine at one hundred pound a day, two hundred pound a day, five hundred pound a week, or whatever it might be, you could actually hire it. You know, the the will is there or the ability is there to hire it for the time that it's running. So, but it, it still requires a plant hire to say, "We're going to do that. We, yeah. We're going to take the advantage, and we're going yeah. to we're going to put our name against that." And yeah. yes, I, I'm, I'm sure there would be some initial pain because rather than getting their five hundred pound a week, they might be getting three hundred because that's how much it's working. But you imagine the PR that comes off the back of that, and they, they would then become everybody's go to hire, wouldn't they? Yeah, they would. Uh, I think it's yeah. You know, we, we we've we've got dash cams in our car. We've got. Um, ring doorbells we've got all sorts of things that now take pictures of what is going on so why aren't we doing it exactly uh, and probably it's because we'll be seeing that of some of those uh cameras are going off at three o'clock on a friday afternoon when really they should be going off at five o'clock on a friday afternoon or five thirty. you know that's it's accountability it's accountability and productivity we know in the uk is always said by the government as to be one of the lowest in the civilized world you know it it is terrible you know our productivity compared to other people like france germany spain and places like that so um you know it's not to say that it's bad but we do we could do so much better 
absolutely. Right, Neil, I've, I've kept you for almost an hour now, and I oh, apologise yeah. for that. Um, okay, but no um, we've, we've obviously got the uh, the web address of the bclive.co.uk scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Uh, is that the best place to find out more, or would you like to direct people elsewhere? Well, that that's for the live table, um, and that's literally sort of like a rolling table like your uh, Sky TV premiership. Uh, table where the goal goes in it changes and well as a contract's awarded it's there but that's the headline act really the best place to go to is buildersconference.co.uk um, and request an online demo to our um uh, our, our platform um where we keep all our information um and and you the way it's been built um is like no other platform out there at, at this present moment in time it, it's obviously been built especially for the construction industry and it was built by the construction industry because uh, with the help of many people from the industry many companies helped us to build it uh, and design it um, so it's what they want rather than what we are telling you you need uh, and there it is it, it, it contains something like approximately eleven thousand projects a year uh, across the uk so yeah just go to buildersconference.co.uk or call us on 0208 770 one and uh, we'll be very willing to help you just to back that up and, and just to, to bring people's attention to this uh, several times this past or it was the past week because the show's only six episodes in on our breakfast show uh, this week we featured a, a couple of early warnings of demolition contracts that have been let including mm. one I, I i remember one specifically the armac of one up in in coventry that comes directly from the builders conference um they they made us aware of that before the market was aware now that, that one was already let but you know there are projects going up there literally by the minute, by the yeah. hour, and yeah. and I mean you you mentioned earlier you know everyone wants to be the first. Well, if you want to be the first to know what projects are going on in your part of the country or in your specific field, BC Live is or Builders Conference is exactly where we go to to find that information. Yeah, we've got a fantastic team of researchers uh, here here at Builders Conference. Uh, they they're very very dedicated, and they're also also known to many of the people in the industry which is a fantastic help for us because we're not that faceless people uh, at the end of a telephone because we do have when we were allowed to have uh, events uh, we we often have an event at the savoy hotel at, at, at christmas time so everybody can meet each other and say hello um yeah and those researchers are, are industry recognized as one of the best and uh, so we're very very lucky i'm very very lucky to sit on top of uh of the pile to organize them and everything else and but i, I would be nothing really uh, uh, unless i had that, that fantastic team of people below me absolutely neil i'm going to let you get back to your working day it looks like you're dressed for success today so um well, that's the only work. time i ever put on a suit so <laughs> <laughs> I, I i probably should have done the same myself you, you're making me look bad but um uh, it's been a pleasure as always and it's it's fantastic news to be talking to you at a time when eight billion pounds in in the bank for the industry that is remarkable news and completely unexpected so um no, fantastic yeah. So thank you for your time today, Neil. I shall speak okay. to you again very, very soon. Um, and thanks, everyone, for watching. If you've got thank any more much. questions, you know where to find Neil. Uh, but in the meantime, that will do for this month's business briefing. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you.